Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Social Marketing Academy. I am your host, Christopher Tompkins, and today we are going to be talking to my friend and my go-to expert for e-learning, who is Panos Shizos. And Panos is going to be talking to us about so many things. I have all of your questions right next to me that you have posed about e-learning and how to become really, really involved within that um, sphere and right next to me. So we're going to be talking about answering your questions with Panos in just a few minutes. But first, I want to welcome you to the show. If you are a first-time listener or watcher of our feed, thanks so much for joining us. Please make sure to click subscribe and even rate us if you'd like to. But if you'd like to see the archive of shows that we've had in, in the past, please visit my agency's website. My agency is the Go Agency. We're a digital marketing agency. Um, and on that, our podcast page, you can see all of the past video, listen to all of the last audio, and so on and so forth. But if you're just a podcast person and you want to use your app, we are available on iTunes, Overcast, everything, Stitcher, all that stuff. So you can go ahead and find us. Also on our website right now, we have an e-course. So make sure to sign up for that. It's free. Now let's talk about um, my friend Panos. Um, Panos is the co-founder and CEO of Learn World. He has a PhD in educational technology, researching and designing e-learning applications for over 20 years. Uh, Panos has extensive work experience as a software engineer, e-learning researcher, and science educator. Before launching Learn Worlds, Learn Worlds with his two co-founders, Panos was working in the European Parliament as a policy advisor for research and innovation. He loves mountaineering, photography, and traveling. But let's meet the man himself. Uh, I think that's the best way for you to uh, get acquainted with Panos. And here he is, Panos. Welcome to the Social Marketing Academy. Hi, Christopher. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, no problem. Um, it's great to see you. I, uh, um, I just went through your bio with everybody to kind of learn a little bit more about you. But um, would you like to say just a few things about yourself to get our listeners and watchers a little bit more well acquainted with, with your background and what you do? Sure. Uh, originally, I studied computer science and then I did a PhD in educational technology. So I've worked in the e-learning space for almost 20 years now. Mm -hmm. big, big number, 21, I would, ha I would have to say. So it, it scares <laughs> me to, 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 to remember the, the dates. And uh, back in 2014, I co-founded with a couple other researchers. We co-founded LearnWorlds, which is a, a platform for creating and selling online courses. And we've been working in this, uh, in this space ever since. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I, I love the platform. It's so clean and easy to use. Um, and I have um, a lot of questions for you. Uh, when, when I said that you're going to be coming on the show and the topic was going to be e-learning and online courses, of course, this is something that not a lot of people talk about on a regular basis. It's usually um, just, you know, email marketing, or social media marketing. And, and, and it's interesting, though, because over the, over like when the pandemic hit, I almost feel that people were really, they had like that, that sense of stillness where they're like, oh, remember that big project I keep pushing off? Maybe now's the time. I mean, did you see an impact in the amount, um, in the market for online courses after the pandemic? Uh, absolutely. The, the impact has been, uh, has been huge. I have to say that back in March, 2020, our business almost tripled overnight. So the, the demand for online courses was, uh, was, it was immense during these initial months when everybody was like trying to figure out what's happening and how their business was affected thousands upon thousands of businesses literally overnight remained without any customers without any kind of access to their to their audiences to their people uh, you it, you can imagine gyms and trainers and uh, yoga studios and everybody yeah. was just trying to find a way to reach out to their customers through the, the the usual channels conferences got canceled and everybody was trying to figure out things so for a few months initially during the the first peak of the of the pandemic people were just staying inside spending time online doing i don't know netflix online gaming and consuming online courses courses or creating the next online course yeah 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 is, was there any category that you saw the most growth in? It's, it's amazing to see how diverse the field is and how people yeah. can use online courses in so many different ways. The, the first thing I have to say, because you mentioned before, like everybody talking about marketing and I don't know, social media and email. I have to say that education is the best form of marketing. 
it's so oh, subtle, it, it's so interesting for people. You're not selling them aggressively. You're not pushing, I don't know, your service or your product. You're mm-hmm. educating them. So you're giving them something valuable. And if you do that correctly, if you package your knowledge or your product or your service in a great way, it can be, it can have an amazing uh, effect on, on what you do. So in fact, some of our best lead magnets are not like traditional eBooks or free services or I don't know, uh, uh, free consultations or stuff like that, just free online courses. So that, that's uh, the, the first piece of advice that I can give to any, any, uh, any marketer. Uh, but in, in yeah. terms of, of the actual field, there is still, and there was always, there always was huge demand around professional skills, especially with this climate and in this economy, jobs have been decimated. People are trying to get retrained and reskilled and retooled for the next job, for the next gig, or obviously even much bigger necessity for people to be retrained and uh, to stay on the on the job and be on the on lifelong learning uh, path so this is always a big part of uh, of the demand that we see for online courses and new skills uh, and new schools being created for professional skills can be web development data science data analytics marketing skills uh, anything that you can uh, finance anything that you can imagine here but also we see huge demand for uh, edutainment spending some quality time online especially now people don't have access to their gym to their favorite restaurants so we're trying to just spend some quality time online learn something new a new hobby photography cooking and yoga meditation spiritual courses anything that you can imagine so the field is absolutely immense and i have to say that every day i see a school around the subject that i would never have imagined I don't know, a niche and then a demand uh, being uh, around for something like that. So the the diversity is really mind blowing. Yeah, it really is. And I think one of the things that you said that I want to amplify is that, you know, what better, a course is a wonderful marketing tool because um, I think one of the things that a lot of people don't think about, well, number one, they get scared about content creation. And I want to ask you about that in a minute. But um, one of the things that after they get past that, they're like, okay, so I'm just going to give a course away. Okay, that's great. I'm like, no, you are going to imprint your expertise, position yourself as the expert on the topic while you're helping them. And if you give them the first part of the story, they're going to need part two. And also, I, I mean, I, I, I've done this myself. I've taken an online course. At the end of the course said, I'm never going to do what they taught me. I'm hiring him. And I've done that. I've definitely done that before. And that is true. And it happens for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, some people have like uh, in within my category, if we're talking digital marketing, there's people that have built their entire consulting business off of online courses. They built their clientele off of online courses. And guess what? What a great way to say, oh, when you're on a sales call with a big company, hey, oh, I actually have a course. Let me send you the link. Um, this is kind of how I think about it. And it's like, oh my God, you've had like a thousand students. You have a five-star rating. You've closed that client. Uh, absolutely. I, I agree absolutely with what you're saying. For me, online courses are the eBooks of 2020. Anything that you used to do with an uh, eBook, like yeah. position yourself as an author, as an expert, like uh, share it with people, get leads, put it, I, I don't know, put it on your desk and show that you've done something, you have accomplished something, but also create a nice little revenue stream for you and, and your business, like selling things on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Now you can do that much better with an online course, which is much better to produce, easier to produce. So now it's super easy to create a video and uh, like with a mobile device, you can just record an amazing, an amazing online course. It's much more interactive, much more engaging easier for people to consume anywhere, anytime on a mobile device, and it gives them a a solid piece of knowledge. And when we're talking about giving away a free course, it doesn't have to be a 30 hour masterclass or or something. (laughs) Yeah, This can just be 40 minutes with, I don't know, a bunch of uh, five minute videos and and, and some eBooks solving a particular problem answering a particular uh, issue that a question that people might have 
touching upon a specific concept that they may that might it might be interesting these can already provide value and these can be your entry way to getting into their uh, into their field of, of vision so next time that they're trying to answer a question about i don't know podcasting digital marketing email marketing whatever they say oh I, there's an expert around that he has created a course so let's check this out so th this yeah. can be it's it's a it's a self-made funnel it's already there so you give them the free course they sign up they want to uh, to know more and then they come back for the for the next version for the for the full uh, for the full uh, monty now here's a question this is kind of this is a this is a question that i get posed a lot um when i'm talking to clients and we're talking about what incentives that we can build to help them convert with with the traffic that they're getting on their website or what have you um and it goes back into because they always want to do the webinar because the webinar is very very small <laughs> and then they feel like the course is very very big but webinar versus online course what do you feel that the online course delivers that the webinar can't the most successful online course sellers that i have seen and we do have quite lots of them especially in the in the past year is they're using webinar as an entry way to their course funnel so you do a webinar, which is like usually more relaxed. People don't have like the same the same commitment. They can drop in, yeah. drop out, whatever. Uh, you do a thirty a thirty minute webinar. You touch upon the subjects. You give them a, f a few glimpses of what they are going to to experience. Usually, uh, an amazingly working funnel that I've seen. Sign up people to your webinar, then sign them up to your free course and then sign them up to your paid uh, to your paid uh, offering so the, the the online course at least the paid offering usually it's much more structured it has all the it's much more uh, uh, like produced well produced it has the, the the right videos there and the right content the webinar you can really do it very easily you can uh, you can set up a webinar in a, in a couple of weeks just promote it and uh, try to uh, to sign people up so in in most cases i've seen it used as a, an entryway for your uh, for your funnel. Now, you said you mentioned before that online courses are easy to create. How can you convince somebody that says that they're not that they are? <laughs> well, I, I have to say that one thing that this uh, terrible pandemic has cured us of is uh, being perfectionists. I, I know that yeah. that's something that's something that I, I was suffering from. You know, we wanted to have the perfect shot and the perfect audio and the perfect yeah. background and the perfect lighting and whatever. And we had we were helping some amazing uh, trainers with great content, expert teachers teaching. I don't know, twenty years, some amazing presentations and they were always getting stopped by their own perfectionism how they, they wanted to purchase the perfect i don't know the most expensive microphone that they could find and the perfect lighting and it was never good enough and what we've seen with COVID and this pandemic is that people go on a zoom on their pajamas and uh, i don't know cats drop in and kids shout on the background and still <laughs> it, it works it works i mean we, we do professional meetings uh, like, i don't know meeting huge customers and investors sometimes it's good enough so mm -hmm. stop procrastinating create your first video put it out there we're doing we usually do one of our most successful like shows that we do for for our customers uh, helping them is the the just launch it challenges just launch it sometimes it's good enough shoot yeah. your videos you can do that now with a mobile device you can put it like or sit in front of your computer with your laptop camera you don't need the expert uh, uh, the the professional microphone and the studio and the i don't know and all the 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 sound insulation and everything it's nice to do that so at, at some point you might go there as well it's not it's not necessary you can do an amazing course you can sell an amazing course and it can be it it feels even more authentic and more real if you're just you in your desk working and just talking to people about the things that you know. This is where people get the get the value. Uh, so we've seen many more people now being more ready to take risks, not be yeah. perfect, not have the perfect, I don't know, presentation, audio, whatever set up, and just put it out there, get feedback. This is going to be an amazing a, a, a super important thing. Get feedback, get your content out there, then you will be able to improve, create better videos, more videos, but first you have validated that there exists sufficient 
demand for your online course. And, and this is another thing that we're seeing people spending, I don't know, tens of thousands of dollars and many, many months to prepare the perfect course and they were putting it out there and it was a dud. So start with something simple, get it out there, just validate that people are interested in what you're doing and that you have a funnel, like people get to know you from your website, your social media, your webinars, whatever, and they sign in and they ask for more and then just put your course out there. So uh, I think people have understood that in the past year and a half, so many people have been educated about online courses or have used them for the first time. So now we're not, we don't have to explain people what an online course is. Chances are that they've consumed multiple in the, in, in the, uh, in the, in the past months. So mm -hmm. uh, it's much easier for people to understand what a product can be and go out there and create their own version of it. I completely agree with you. And I think that what, uh, for me, okay. So I am a person that when I'm, when I'm looking at anything, I'm judging every part of its marketing because that's innate to me. That's what I'm doing. I will put all of my judgment aside if the content is there. If the content is fantastic, I don't care if you have it in a greasy paper bag, I want it, you know? And, and that's the truth. Like I've taken a course, it was a, I can't remember what it was, but it was a course for something digital. And, um, and it, the person was lit by the light of their computer screen only. And they were talking into their computer and I couldn't give two shits. It was fine. The, 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 the content was great. So um, I think that it's really a testament. I mean, obviously, if you, you want to make sure that it's on brand for you, but you can go online and buy microphones if you want the microphone for very inexpensive. The prices have gone right down because the demand's gone right up. So there is always, there are always time to improve. You can, uh, so you have to be flexible. You have to be, you have to create a modular course. Sometimes we have people coming to us and say, okay, I'm an expert training trainer. I've been doing that for 20 years. I have an amazing presentation. Uh, I will do a video for 55 minutes. And we say, are we, are you crazy? 55 <laughs> minutes of video that goes, I mean, research shows clearly that like attention and, uh, and, uh, yes, and yeah. uh, concentration on a, on a video drops rapidly after 10 or 12 minutes. Yeah. How are you going to produce a 55 minute video? So just split your presentation, record 10 five minute videos, which then will be much easier to replace, much easier to edit. Once there's a new piece of knowledge, you can just put it there in between. If you want to improve lighting, whatever, you can do that over time gradually by improving your course. So these little, these little tips. So the traditional experience that we have from training, traditional training within a classroom setting, within a, a business setting, don't always transfer, uh, get to, to be transferred like di directly to what we do in online courses. So we have to think more creatively, more in a more modular way. We have to adapt. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is how you can create a perfect course. And we've seen some amazing classes also by combining live classes with uh, pre-recorded classes. So you can just do a webinar and then record it, a webinar training with your, I don't know, with the people that you coach or with a small group. You can record it and then you can repackage it and sell it as an online course. Or mm -hmm. you can just do, uh, as you can have some of your courses in a, in a pre-recorded uh, format, like the well-produced videos. And then every week you can throw in a live weekly session where you just have a Q and A, whatever you, you go through the, through the, the question. So people used to get blocked by content is difficult to create. Yes. yes. It's yeah. quite difficult to have a, a non brand on the spot, uh, a useful, valuable course. But yeah. if you just break down the, the problem and uh, have the content and uh, like produce the different little things and be more flexible about the and more strategic about the content that you create, it can be very easy to, to, to produce, especially for somebody who knows their, uh, their stuff. That, that's the most yes. important thing. You have to know your stuff. Otherwise, you cannot just come with something uh, out of thin air. Yeah, and I, I always say that to, to people, if they're trying to put stuff together and it's really, really difficult, I kind of understand that they don't know what they're talking about. And I know that like when I'm dealing with clients or prospective clients and I'm asking them about their message. Um, but one of the things that we like to, we like to tell our clients, I like to have um, one piece of content and have it consume 
however the, the, the audience wants to consume it. Some people want to see it on social and click the link. Some people want to get it through email. Some people want to hear it. Some people want to see it. Some people want to read it. Some people want to just watch it. So what I always suggest is um, when, when someone's interested in doing a, like a course or an ebook or something like that is to write a start with blogs and to write a series of blogs that can be packaged together that literally they could just read the blog and then talk afterwards. Then they have like, they could have a podcast, they can have a video stream, they have something for Instagram, they have something for YouTube, they have um, online course material. It's easier than it seems. It's just get your planning together and you can really put something cohesive together without much extra effort. I totally agree. And we are big believers of reusing and recycling your content and repurposing your content. Also, when it comes to the actual instructional design and how people learn, multimedia is very important. So sometimes we forget the, the origin of multimedia, like being able oh. to represent the same kind of stuff in multiple forms. Because some people are visual learners, others prefer to others prefer to, 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 to listen to something or to read something. So uh, that's also something that uh, we we very much believe of uh, believing in in our product. So you can create ebooks and you can upload your videos and then you can create interactive videos. And each different person might use a different uh, 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 way to to access the same content. So you can help them by repurposing and having all these uh, all these uh, opportunities for them and all these uh, facilities that they can uh, that they can use. Another question that I get a lot, um, and I would just want to see what kind of insight that you have on this because this is your area. Um, pricing design is really challenging um, for a lot of a lot of people that are content creators or businesses that are doing this. And they will say, okay, well, I have this online course. Um, it, it, is, it, is, it, is my sweet spot $35.99 or is it $359? I mean, how do you like advise people in terms of pricing their courses? Obviously. The free one is the free one packed with value. It doesn't matter how long it is, it, it's free. But what about the one that they want to monetize? How, what, where's the, where's the starting point for the pricing do you feel? Mm -hmm. it, uh, I know that this is a, a subject that really perplexes a lot of, uh, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, first of all, it's not a, a science, it's an art. So, uh, but also it means that you can, it's not set in stone your pricing. So it's difficult to give the right answer for your audience. Uh, like there is, there aren't any clear guidelines of uh, like uh, I don't know if you are doing that, then it's uh, thirty five ninety nine. But you can experiment. You can increase your pricing. Start with something, and if you see that you have success, then you can increase your pricing. And I know that people are too scared of increasing their pricing. And uh, but in uh, it's it makes uh, so much sense instead of trying to find to get. 100 sales per month of a $10 course, you can get just four sales of a $300 course. So it, it really depends on who, who you're targeting and what is the value that that's also what we're trying to do as a, as a business and what you're trying to do as a, as a consultant. Uh, what is the value that people get out of this? So yeah. we, we, have, we have examples of everything within, uh, within our customer range. We have some customers that are selling fitness classes and they have like a very nice little model like subscription. It can be $7 per week. A very small amount. Instead of going to the gym, you buy something online. It feels so much cheaper. So it's very, very small. But if you have 10,000 people paying you $7 per, per week, then this is a, a, huge, a, a huge success. It's like recurring revenue and, and, uh, and it grows. And also we right. have some customers that are selling professional courses uh, tailored to for executives and this can be like a life-changing experience for somebody it's something that can help them get to the next level become a ceo of, of a business and these courses are being sold for three five ten grand so yeah. uh, the, the the range is really is really huge i know that we always uh, tend to underprice everything we do we are scared of like how people will feel but it's okay you can start low and then once you're starting That's having right. your courses, you can uh, push gradually the prices up until you, you find a, a, a sweet spot. So I don't have an answer. I've seen everything, very yeah. small courses and very big courses, but I know that it's not a big deal. So you can start at a price where you feel comfortable and uh, uh, you can see what the competition is doing. 
how others are solving the same problem? So, and what is your competitor? How would your customers solve the problem that you're trying to solve through your, uh, through your online course? Would they buy a book or would they need to spend, to hire a professional for, I don't know, five hours of five days of consultation? If it's the, for, the former, then I don't know, 30 euros, $30 might be absolutely fine. But if it's the latter, then you better charge 500 or $1,000 mm -hmm. and, and up. And, uh, and the numbers, it always has to do with the funnel. As I mentioned, sometimes it makes much more sense to have just a handful of customers that are paying lots of money and you are, can have the time and the attention to coach them and help them and really get to a, a, a really transformational point instead of trying to sell lots and lots and lots of uh, courses for a very small price. I have another question for you. I just wrote down because it's something that someone was asking me. Um, if the content of the course is 99% evergreen, but there's that 1% that changes. So if I'm going to look through the course catalog and I see that the course was from nine, um, 2019 instead of 2020 or whatever, I'm going to, I'm like, oh, well, that's too outdated. Um, if, do you suggest they create another model and just rebrand it as the updated version? Or what, what is like the easiest way do you feel to do that? You can keep upgrading your content. You can keep uh, adjusting the content. Uh, we've seen some amazing cases where you can just have the same content and adapt it to slightly different markets or mm -hmm. sell it to different, uh, to different customers. Uh, this is also a great case for consultants or coaches where you can create a course for, I don't know, conflict resolution within a company, whatever. And you can sell it uh, to Coca-Cola, create, uh, like mentioning a brand, create a, 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 a version just for them. And then you can do a copy, uh, adapt it to the, to the customer and sell it to, I don't know, Pepsi, Mercedes, whatever. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's one case. Or you can do social media marketing, let's say a social media marketing course for small businesses. And then you can do one for, uh, I don't know, travel businesses, and then you can adapt 10% of the course and adapt it and make it to, I don't know, minority owned businesses or female entrepreneur run businesses or whatever. And, and you can have all these different versions of the courses. And anytime there's something new, it, you don't have to replace the entirety of your course. You can just replace 10%, make it more relevant, uh, I don't know, to, to the, the things that are, that are happening. And then uh, and, and then republish and repost your, your course. In, in fact, most of our customers are constantly relaunching their courses. A, and the launch can be, uh, you can have the, uh, the, the, the same evergreen content, but you can do a nice marketing campaign, bring in more people, do your webinars. And at some point you can even stop accepting new customers and treat those customers as a cohort. So you can say, I only accept 100 people because I want to give them my full attention. So let's say next month I'm opening my course for 100 new, new entrants and, and, and that's it. So uh, there's lots of things that, uh, that, uh, that can be done, uh, but reusing your content and, and repackaging the content that happens in every industry. So uh, yes. no reason why uh, it, it wouldn't work here. So I have this, I have a course finished. How do I market it? I mean, what is the, what is the best way do you feel to market a course? Cause I feel that I think some people that build courses feel that I built the course people will find me. And it's kind of like build it and they will come mentality, which isn't always the way to create success. Yes. No, it, it isn't. No. Uh, and and as, a, as first time uh, entrepreneurs, this is how we started like seven years ago. You know, we as scientists, we knew that we could create the best possible platform because not many, very few Probably, I don't know of any, any other pl course platform that has been created by e-learning researchers. So we thought that, okay, we'll just be the best, pl the best platform and then people will flock to us. And then we realized that we have to put our platform in front of people's eyes in order to, to, to realize what we're, what we're offering. So it really depends on your market and what are, where your customers reside. Are they on Reddit? Are they on social media? Are they on uh, LinkedIn? Where are they? So this will determine what are the best uh, channels for you. There are some channels that are slow to start uh, with, like social uh, and uh, sorry, like SEO, organic. 
Yeah. If you if you already have a, a blog, however, if people already know you, if you already have decent traffic, then this can be an amazing uh, channel uh, for you. Uh, social again, uh, it really depends on your audience. If you have the the the, the ideal entrepreneur and our ideal customer is the, is the uh, the one that already has the content and the audience. Uh, so you you have something to begin with if you don't have the the audience then you have to create it so mm. you have to see where your uh, ideal customers create your persona and see where your ideal customers spend their time do your research you have to see whether they're on social media whether you can find them on traditional through traditional channels and uh, and uh, put your your offering in front of uh, in front of them yeah, I completely agree with you. And I, I think that that's a really important thing for anyone that's interested in, in creating a course to really understand that they are going to have to put promotional maybe dollars and time behind it um, to make sure that it's put through all of your all of your different channels. If you're a service based company, guess what, you now have a product that you have to sell. So you're going to have to look at it at, at that way as well. Um, and, and obviously, I, we're talking about pricing, we're talking about how to market these um, how about increasing money? Um, can online course creators increase their sales through partnerships and affiliate marketing? Absolutely. In, in fact, online courses are one of the top channels. Uh, affiliate is one of the top channels for, for online courses, uh, also for platforms in the, in the space. Uh, and in our own tool, we have a built-in uh, affiliate channel. So it, it, it really works. It helps you grow your network. Uh, it helps you uh, have partners who promote this. And, and I think all marketing works as a, an ecosystem. You have like, uh, I don't know, uh, the YouTube channels and social media and uh, uh, you can use anything. If, you, if, if there's an influencer in, this, uh, in, in your space, in your area, then use them to promote your courses. This is, uh, this is one of the, of the top things that can, uh, that can happen, of, of the top channels, the, the most high converting channels that we have seen in online courses is uh, affiliates. Like if there's an expert or an influencer in your space, use them give them yeah. a, a lot and usually the model in online courses is a lifetime commission so if you're selling a, a subscription a, a membership a, like by keep keeping adding keep adding new uh, new content within your your online school then a lifetime subscription makes sense obviously you will be giving away 15 20 25 percent of the value but you do zero marketing so others are helping you promote your online courses now that's a really interesting point because i was actually talking to a client the other week that um has um a whole series of cooking classes that she's doing and i you know I, one of the things I, I was really trying to help her and help her with was to find a way of creating a membership site that exclusive that content that's already existing can be put in there and then we can kind of update it on a regular basis with new content. So do within within Learn Worlds, are you able to create a school or a membership, a membership type program? Sure. Yes. That's a, th this is where the market has been going for like three or four years now yeah. towards subscription revenue, memberships, uh, recurring revenue. Uh, and in fact, it's not only about add, keeping adding new content. That's one part of the equation. If you keep adding more content, people will renew their subscription. They will be inclined to stay, get the new courses. Sometimes you just have to update the existing courses. This is another thing. But the, the best, the most valuable thing that you can offer to people to keep them engaged and keep them like paying and keeping them subscribed is by offering them a community. Because then it's not just them and the content or them and the and the teacher, but it's also other peers, like-minded people who are in the same journey. They love the same things. They they want the same things. They exchange information. So even if it's a cooking class, you create a community. People exchange ideas. Sometimes it's obviously a community has to have a critical mass. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to nurture it and you have to keep... Uh, pushing it, but after a certain size, a critical mass, it takes off on its own. And then uh, we, we see the most successful uh, online schools that ha we have are those that manage to create a community around the, their online courses. And in fact, this is the whole concept of LearnWorlds. It's a world of learning. It's not just 
it, it replicates how we learn because in the real world, we don't learn in, iso in isolation. Learning is a team sport. You need other people. You need to bounce uh, ideas off of each other. You need to, and in some cases, uh, you, you ask a question and it's not the, the teacher or the trainer that comes to, to your aid. It's other people who've been through the same process yes. who know, we like to know, to show that we know things. Uh, we, we, we are in this, uh, in this together. So key, adding new content is one part of the equation for having a, a successful membership site, being able to create a community. This is the, the second thing. And sometimes it's, uh, it's even more, more important. So it creates yeah. a, fly, a flywheel. And then it's, it's a business that takes off on its yeah. own. People keep uh, uh, referring you to their no ones, to, to, to other who, who others who might benefit from your courses. Affiliate marketing can also be a huge uh, channel there by incentivizing your students to promote you to other students. And this can create a very valuable business. This is uh, uh, online businesses, uh, online schools can be amazing businesses in a box. Then you have your own property, your own content. You get to control your audience, your data. So you can have an amazing online business just purely entirely online. And this is the most 2021 thing people can do. <laughs> No, I love I love that. Uh, you know, one of the things that I always uh, people always they don't cringe as much as they crumple whenever I mention affiliate marketing um, because they they don't understand. They always think it's going to be a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of management, a lot of um, just trying to figure out how to keep all the relationships up in the air. Um, how do you present that through Learn Worlds? Like, how is that? How do you guys manage the affiliate process? Uh, within each, first of all, we also use affiliate marketing ourselves for promoting the platform. And yes, it takes time. You need to have the, the right uh, partners. Sometimes uh, in affiliate uh, channels, there are some people who are, I don't know, it's a shady, it can be a shady business. So we have some, some people that come who have, uh, who are trying to make some, some quick money. We don't want those. We want the experts. We want those that really understand what a marketing platform is, what an online course platform is, either expert marketers or experts in the in the e-learning space. And this is we uh, this is uh, who we partner with. And the same should happen in your if you run a school. So you should try try to work with people who are established, well known. We have a, a clear brand and a clear voice, and just work with the with the best. And from the technical point of view, we we solve this problem. We have a built-in tool uh, within the LearnWorlds platform. So instead of having to pay, I don't know, $100, $200 just for a, a, a new tool that you would have then to manage and integrate, it happens natively. So uh, you can convert each and every one of your customers into a, a affiliate uh, in, so they can promote your courses in exchange for a commission. And you can set everything up. It can be a 10% commission one-off, or it can be a 20% commission for lifetime. So you can play around with the settings and you can, uh, you can set That's this great. up. So each one of your students gets a nice little link and then they can just use it to promote it, uh, promote your courses through their own social media, their own channels. And this is a network effect. Then you have more and more people right. uh, getting to know about you and testing out. It can be a freebie. Again, there, use the freebie, have people uh, share, use their, their, their uh, affiliate link to share a free course. You're not selling something. You're just giving them access to a free piece of, of, of knowledge. And if people like it, they might sign up. So that's a, that's a very nice uh, bargain for everyone involved. Yeah, and it's definitely one to not, um, not ignore. Now, um, before I let you go, I just wanted to ask you, you know, there are lots of um, online course platforms out there. What, what is your differentiator? What sets you apart? Uh, as I mentioned, I think we are the only ones who are who really are experts in e-learning. Uh, I know yeah. that this might, this might sound something, but our very reason for creating platform in the first, in the first place was that we really believe that online course platforms were sucking badly. Uh, <laughs> so most of them were mostly dealing with the management of learning and not with the actual learning itself. So they were just throwing a PDF at somebody and say, okay, this is e-learning. Sorry, yeah. buddy, that, that's not e-learning. Like throwing a PDF at somebody and see what sticks that's not how this thing works. Uh, we are 
doggedly uh, focused on uh, obsessively, I would say, on the learner experience and creating yeah. beautiful online courses. I mean, people today are used to having slick digital experiences with their, I don't know, iPads, tablets, gaming devices. So ugly courses and ugly websites don't sell. So we have an amazing website builder. You can create an e-learning website, e-commerce enabled in, I don't know, five minutes with the built-in templates that we, that we have, wow. beautiful design, and also very designer friendly and very developer friendly. So we take away all the design and development complexity, things that will probably set you back dozens of thousands of dollars to get the right people to help you set up a site and plugins and make the mechanics and the plumbing work. We take this out of the equation so, they can, so that the creator can focus on what they know, create the best possible online course that they can and sell it, promote it to as many people as, as possible. So that's what we're trying to do. Excellent. Well, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to put all the links so people can learn more about you and Learn Worlds. But um, do you, uh, it, where, where's the best place for people to learn more? The website? Yes, people can just go to our website, www.learnworlds.com, and uh, they can just start a free trial. We offer a 30-day free trial, no credit cards, no strings attached. And Great. you can always sign up to one of our uh, webinars. We do daily webinars presenting the platform and also just helping entrepreneurs. We know that this is a very difficult situation. Lots of businesses have been devastated and decimated and people are trying to transition into online business models or trying to find new ways of doing business, new ways of reaching their customers. Online education just might be the right thing for you. As I mentioned before, I totally believe that education is the best form of marketing. And I really believe that learning is what makes us human and alive and, and creative mm -hmm. and keeps yeah. the, the world going, going forward. So we would be happy to just help you out uh, and see if this is something that can work for your business as well. Excellent. Well, Panos, thank you so much for being a guest today. I mean, I've learned so much about things as well, which is always a win for me. Um, but um, th thank you so much for joining us on the Social Marketing Academy. Um, folks, we have some really great shows coming up for the rest of the month, so make sure to tune in. They're going to be hitting live on Tuesday evenings, Eastern Standard Time. So check them out on, um, on social, Facebook, YouTube, and also anywhere that you find podcasts. Hey, do you have a second? You sure do. Go to GoSalesAndMarketing.com, sign up for our e-course, and also check out our podcast page. There's lots of other great shows, and I have many interviews with different subject matter um, that will be very interesting for you to check out. Also, check out the blogs. I wrote them, so I obviously like them. So definitely check them out and see what you think. Okay, folks, until next time, thanks for joining us on the Social Marketing Academy. Take care of yourselves.